What happens at Grandma's stays at Grandma's is a model for you and your grandkids. If it's fun, it's fair game. But lately, hip pain has you grimacing more than laughing. And that's a moment you realize life's too short to put off treatment any longer. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for orthopedic care with hundreds of joint replacements each year. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better. The Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 559, daily weigh-in, how do you use my fitness pal? I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. What's up? Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine, and this is the Daily Weigh-In, where I take your questions and I give them an answer, at least to the best of my abilities, on this podcast. But you can always send me your questions. Um, You can email me anytime, Amanda at AmandaValentineBites.com. Also on Instagram, where I put these question boxes up, where I get a lot of these questions from. You can follow me at You Can Pound This. It's not porn. (laughs) And uh, hopefully I can answer your question. As always, if I cannot answer your question, I will get an expert or at least attempt to and try to get one on here to answer your questions. And this one, weirdly, I have gotten a lot of just in the past couple days, and that is how the heck do you use MyFitnessPal? And basically, how do you find out what your calories and macros are? Because if you do follow me on Instagram, um, I show my meal prep Sunday, which I show my meal prep process, but I don't share usually my own weights and measurements and stuff that I use because that is according to me and my goals and where I'm at. And this year has been all over the map. So trust me, you don't want to copy paste what I'm doing because it won't work for you (laughs) because I'm a different human than you are. And, you know, and I I am, I'm a fan of doing those things if you feel comfortable doing them. And I also want to reiterate this too, of like calorie calories and macros is not the end all be all. That's what you have to do to be successful. I think that it's an important tool in your toolbox to know how much you are are eating and to know if you're in a caloric deficit, if you're wondering, if you're trying the best you can, you think you're eating as healthy as possible and you're frustrated because you're not reaching your own personal goals, it gives you a really good look at what's going on and what you can tweak. So I think it can go into a dangerous place where you can become obsessive and I have been there. Listen, I have been on every single (laughs) weird facet of this journey of never exercising at all. I don't even want to go up a flight of steps to overly obsessing over exercise. So I've been all over the place. And so I'd say that there was for me using my fitness pal. And I want to go into this podcast by saying, this is what feels good for me right now. And there's been periods of my own weight loss journey and just living in general where I have stressed a ton over counting calories. I did Weight Watchers a couple of times and I stressed over counting points and it was not the right fit for me then. So if you feel like this is stressful and you don't enjoy it, then don't do it. I don't want you to feel like, oh, this is the key to success. I I go, I fluctuate where I plan and plot everything into my fitness pal. I, I track everything. And then I go times where I don't track at all. And me losing the majority of the weight, actually, almost all of it, I was not tracking in my fitness pal. I was not tracking calories. I was just making, I was just making better choices and moving more. I was not weighing and measuring things out. I'd say as I was losing more and more weight, I started doing that and I started honing in on it because I wasn't reaching the goals that I wanted to reach. And I, you know, was getting smaller and I was exercising a lot more and I needed to fuel my body in different ways for how I was exercising and and how my body was changing. So I just want to say that there's no right or wrong way. But if you're going to ask me how I use my fitness pal, how I use it now is I basically plug everything in for, for since I cook for the whole week, because that is my preferred method. And again, 
There are no rules. If you don't want to meal prep, you don't like essentially eating leftovers every day, you think that's sad and it sucks, then don't do it. Yo, I get it. (laughs) But for me, I'm lazy. I want it all to be thought out ahead of time. I do not want to configure calories and macros or think about it or what I'm going to cook or do I have enough food or do I need to run the store. Feeling that every day stresses me out and I do not enjoy it. That's why I meal prep far in advance. That's my own personal preference. I totally understand if you don't want to do that. But for me, because that's how I cook, is I go into my fitness pal, I kind of think about what what I'm vibing on, like I'm listening to my body, what sounds really good this week. I did a couple weeks ago, I did um, an all plant-based week because I'm like, that sounds like a challenge, that sounds real yummy. This week, I'm eating steak and chicken and eggs, like I... I'm kind of all over the map. I'm just kind of listening to what I'm craving and what sounds good. And so then I plug those things into my fitness pal to see how they fit into my calories and or macros. I am using my fitness pal premium right now, which if you're interested in macros and you should do that. And macros basically, again, this is broad sweep sweep statements here. Is it, I mean, you're going to count your biggest macronutrients, your proteins, your carbs, your fats, um, and just to kind of get a good food balance for fueling fueling your body if you want to count macros. That doesn't mean that that is the best way to do it or the only way to do it. It depends on where you're at in your own journey. So you're like, okay, Amanda, cool story. How did you figure out what your macros should be? How do you figure out what your calories should be? And I will say that changes a lot too. And I would say the easiest way, I mean, if you want to look up the math equations, like go for it. I mean, you have internet access, you're listening to this podcast. So do a Google search and just look up like how to, you know, if if it fits your macros as a website you can use, if you'd like to figure out macros that way, there's plenty of website like calculators, calorie, just look up calorie macro calculators. My fitness pal does offer that too. And again, these are very generic. These are not super specified to you. And even if they are, it's still like, you know, your body's your own personal chemistry set. We're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, right? So it also depends on what your calorie intake is going to be or what your macros are going to be based upon how much you move in a day. Like, do you have an active job? Are you on your feet? Are you getting 10,000 steps a day outside of a workout? Are you working out really hard? Are you not working out at all? Like it, all those things factor in. So basically you're going to input your daily activity, your height, your weight, um, and your goals. And then it's going to come up with a number basically going to be like, Hey, we think you should start here. So you're going to say like, I would like to lose this much weight in this amount of time. And it's going to give you through just a mathematical calculation from what it knows about the generic human body. This is where we think you should be as far as being in a caloric deficit. If you want to lose weight or if you're trying to gain mass and gain muscle, this is where we think that you should be. And this is kind of what your, you know, your macro breakdown can look like depending on your goals, also depending on what you like. And I'd say for me, where, where I'm at, because I've been doing this so long where it's been eight and a half years now, I, it's easier for me to put this stuff together for myself because I have learned so much about myself. So if you're just starting, trying to figure all this stuff out, it is going to hurt your brain. And it does, it sucks (laughs) until you get a hang of it, which is why it's so easy to just bail on, right? Like, because just because you figure those things out. So let's say you're figuring out your, your calories, your macros, you're going to go by what my fitness pal or lose it, or a, a calculator online is telling you, if you're doing this on your own, then you're going to basically start there as your baseline. But you're going to have to stick with that for a few weeks to basically gauge is this working or not? Or are you feeling full? Are you feeling hungry? You know, you're going to have to take notes of those things. And then also, are you obtaining the goals that you want? And again, with patience and grace, do you want to, you know, not be obsessive? Like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in a month. Let's not harm ourselves here. Let's be realistic. Slow and steady wins the race. And then you kind of recalculate of like, you know what? I stuck with this for a couple of weeks. And I am so hungry and want to cut somebody like, "Hmm, no, this is not it. Like all I'm doing is thinking about food all day. That's not how you should be living. You know what I mean? Like you should, you know, 
enjoy your meals. You should be enjoying what you're eating. You should feel satisfied when you're done eating it. Not like, oh my God, I'm still starving because I just had three pieces of lettuce because this is what a quote unquote diet looks like. And this is how you lose weight. No, 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 no. So for me, I, when I, right now I know where for myself, because I'm actually changing my workout routine as we speak, which hopefully I'll be talking about soon. And that, that changes up what my workouts are because my workouts have been trash all year because I've been dealing with this pinched nerve and haven't been able to do a damn thing. And I was spinning on my bike doing the Peloton and I loved it and it would just put me in more pain. And I, it's been the most 2020 sucks, but I will just say because things are changing for me right now, that's changing because my exercise is changing and how I want to fuel my body for my exercise. I'm, I'm changing the calories and the macros around. So for me, I'm going to go, how I do this is I go into my fitness pal and I know for me, if I eat under four ounces of protein, I'm hungry. Like I just, I like to eat more protein. And I have learned that from myself from doing this for a while. So that might not be the case for you. Everybody is so different. But for me, like I already kind of got a good gauge that at a meal, I want somewhere between four and seven ounces of protein. And that's going to keep me full. And I typically eat five to six meals a day. I have my my, I kind of have like two mini breakfasts and then I have lunch, dinner, and I have snacks. That is my own preferred method. That is not the right or wrong way either. I know for me that I like to eat more throughout the day. Some people just like to eat once or twice a day. If you're doing intermittent fasting, again, everyone is so different. There is no right or wrong way for me. I like to eat five, six times a day. That works best for me. I love it. That is my preferred method. I know that when I do have those bigger meals to be satiated, I need more protein. So when I think about how I'm going to lay out what I want to eat for the week, I will automatically start by like, okay, so I want chicken breast. I'm going to need at least four ounces in here, maybe six ounces. I want six ounces of steak or, you know, whatever, like using this weekend as, a, as an example. I plug those in. Then I kind of think of like other sides and I just kind of, and it's like, it's, it is like a little puzzle, which is why I like to just figure it out once for the week. <laughs> and so then I kind of plug in what I want to make and then just kind of create, um, like a meal plan for myself around that. Okay. So I want for post-workout, I want, you know, lots of protein, I want some carbs in there. I want to feel full cause I'm going to feel really hungry. So plan what I want around that. And then that's where I'll like, let's say I want cottage cheese. And then once everything's kind of plugged in, like I put in for like this week, I'm doing, um, my first meal of the day is, uh, is egg whites and oatmeal, which is super boring, but you guys, I like, this is how I like to eat to hate on me. If you want, I've got, I've got better ideas than this week. <laughs> I can get more creative, but I'm having egg, egg whites and oatmeal. And then uh, post-workout, I'm doing cottage cheese and some veggies, depending on if I'm doing a really hard workout or not, I throw some nanner in there. Um, and then for lunch, I'm doing chicken, rice, broccoli. Again, it's boring. Then dinner, um, which the dinner and the lunch are kind of close to each other because I'm spacing things out differently. Again, I'm just always experimenting, always seeing what I like and it always changes. Doing steak and sweet potatoes. And then for a snack at night, because I like this night snack, I'm having um, Greek yogurt and strawberries. And so I kind of plug in what I'm thinking. I definitely do the hardcore meals first put in, I always start with my protein amounts and then kind of build around them and then play with the amount. So let's say that I've already gone over my cat. Like, let's say I put one cup of cottage cheese and I want to do full fat cottage cheese and I kind of plug everything else in that I want to do. And it's like, way well, I'm way over calories or I'm, I'm way over something. Then I'll go back and dial that down. I'm like, okay, well, what if I did a half a cup and usually a half a cup doesn't keep me full. I usually got to do at least a three fourths of a cup of cottage cheese. And then I just kind of, kind of go in and manipulate everything till it kind of fits what I want. I am not exact to 
the to the exact calorie to the exact ma- macro for myself personally where I'm at right now I just kind of like hit rough estimates of of where I'm at and it also depends on what my goals are my goals are right now is just to I'm starting a new fitness routine that hopefully uh, gels really well with the stupid injury I've been dealing with and if that goes good then I'm probably going to get more and more serious about training, which I'll explain this on a later podcast. And it, it and it'll change. And I think that's what's important to know is there's not one right way, one wrong way, and it's never going to stay steady. It's going to constantly fluctuate and move just like your life is. This year, I mean, this year is such a great example. We've all had to change some things in our life. All of us. And some way more than others, but you have to like learn to flow with these changes, not saying that it's fun or we're getting, all of us are getting through it great, but we're figuring it out somehow, right? To try to get a new balance, a new footing on what we're doing. And that's what's going to happen with this to you might be, I've been in, you know, seasons of my life where me, I was just really working on like sculpting my body, um, I had, uh, for a few months, I had Zeb from Natty Nutrition and New Ethics, um, who, because we were coworkers, he's been on a million episodes of this podcast, he was doing um, just very specific, like, bodybuilder sort of plan for me down to the macro, and I was following it to a T, and because I was like, let's see if I can, like, what I can change my body into, you know, like, let's see what, like, how can I transform it? And then, oh, I forgot what kind of skidded that off the rails, but something came up. Something always comes up, right? So it's like sometimes you're laser focused. And, you know, for me at the time, it's like everything else in my life is going good. I can really hone in on this. And then sometimes there's fires going on in your life and you're like, you know, this is important to me. I'm going to stay healthy, but I, I need to take a little bit of energy away from this to put out these other fires in my life. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not good at this. It doesn't mean you're going to gain all your weight back. It doesn't mean you're going to lose all your muscle gain or anything like that. It's just the ebbs and flows of life. (laughs) So I hope that answers the questions of how I use my fitness pal. And I know that's not giving you a direct answer of how many calories you should be eating or what your macros should be. Again, very generic answer. Use a calculator online. Use the generic ones in MyFitnessPal. See how you feel. Give it a few weeks and then retool, reconfigure. Uh, listen to your own body. Are you hungry? Are you not? Or do you feel like you're eating all day and it's not enough? Are you, do you feel fueled around your workouts if you're working out? All those things just really take stock in yourself and be self-aware and feel that out. If you're having a really hard time figuring those sorts of things out, you hate the calories and macros, again, ditch that and then just eat what feels good. As long as you're feeling good mentally and physically, that's the goal, right? So just play with that. And if not, as always, ask for help. If you need help, then definitely you can always reach out to me, Amanda at amandavalentinebites.com. I do want to say this is an amazing resource right now that uh, if you've heard, they haven't been on in a while. Things have been weird because of COVID. But um, Amelia and Sarah, who are dietitians for Kroger, who have been on this podcast a lot, they are ones of many dietitians that work for Kroger. And right now in COVID, they are offering free dietitian meetings via telehealth. So um, look up, I think it's um, thelittleclinic.com slash dietitian, and you can schedule virtual meetings to meet with a registered dietitian to, even if you don't have, or not around a Kroger, I mean, if you've got Fred Meyer or any of that stuff, or King Supers, wherever you're at, I mean, sure, you have a Kroger affiliate somewhere, even if not, whatever. (laughs) But they'll help you shop. They'll kind of point you in the right direction. They can answer your questions. And that is a really good free resource right now. If you're looking for more and you want a coach, you want an accountability partner, um, uh, I am currently not taking on any new people at this exact second, but... I do have a wait list if you want to join that, or if you want me to recommend someone else for you, I'm absolutely happy to do that. But no matter what, if you just have questions, 
ask for help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, there ain't no shame in that game. There's lots of people out there, including myself that, you know, want to help you reach your goals. And there's, uh, I mean, a lot of questions to ask. So feel free again, Amanda at Amanda Valentine bites.com. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. For info on health coaching and more, go to amandavalentinebites.com.